Hello, this is Dr. Kim from Hehu Spine and Joints. Today's topic is compression fracture. Compression fractures refer to vertebral body fractures at low thoracic and lumbar areas. The lifetime prevalence of compression fractures is around 20% in the U.S., meaning one of your grandparents is very likely to have compression fractures at least once in their lifetime. The compression fractures are one of osteoporotic fractures, meaning they occur mostly to elderly population with poor bone quality, more so for old ladies. Falling backwards on one's back or buttocks is the most common cause, increasing vertical load onto the vertebrae. These same events usually result in mere back strains or disc herniations among young people because since their bone quality is much better, the axial stress will be passed on to intervertebral disc and back musculature. Meanwhile, elderly population spine bones cannot bear such load and result in vertebral fracture. Compression fracture patients complain a great deal of pain when they change positions, especially when they get up from lying down. It's because the spine acts as the main pillar of our bodies. One fractured bone or broken brick amongst the pillar will be the source of instability and pain. That's why the pain is lowest when lying down still and increases as the patient changes position from lying down to sitting and moreover to standing. Even mild a pat on the back will cause extreme pain. It's rare for compression fracture patients to require surgery, but for diagnostic purpose, they usually need x-ray and MRI scans. You can see square-shaped vertebral bodies fractured into wedge shape on x-ray. MRI scans can tell whether the wedge-shaped vertebral body is recent fracture or not. The scan can also show your doctor if the bone fragment is pressing on neurological structures passing behind the bone. Unless there is neurological symptoms or the patient suffers multiple consecutive compression fractures, the treatment is mainly close observation with braces in place. After one or two weeks, the pain should be reduced substantially as the bone heals spontaneously. But if the pain sustains and the fracture does not get so stable upon follow-up x-ray, vertebroplasty becomes a valid option. The vertebroplasty refers to a procedure injecting bone cement into fractured vertebrae. It dramatically reduces pain almost right after the procedure. The braces are kept for three months usually. Everyday activity is allowed with the brace on. It is strongly recommended to keep the brace on all the time except for when you're lying down. Since the vertical load on your spine gets highest at the moment when getting up from lying down, you must put on your brace first before getting up. Similarly, you must wait until you have lied down completely and then take your brace off. Compression fractures occur after minor traumas. The patients are likely to have osteoporosis in the first place. So the treating the osteoporosis is just as important as treating the fracture itself because repetitive compression fractures will cause kyphotic alignment of spines and stenosis of neural structures. It is strongly recommended for compression fracture patients to take bone quality evaluations and take osteoporosis medications if needed. Also, strengthening the back muscles will provide positive stimulus to the vertebrae making them mechanically stronger. Thank you for listening.